Hi, this is Drew Loker with another Tech Apps video tutorial. Today we will be beginning a spreadsheet assignment for grade and score trackers. Please proceed to your Google Classroom, click on the Classwork tab, find your spreadsheet one grade and score trackers, SS1 grade and score trackers. Yours will have quite a few more things listed out there, so look for the SS1 view assignment. You'll also want to click on the instructions and have the text-based instructions open. Mine have already been open, so click this link, and it should take you to a page that looks like this. We have two major assignments, beginning with assignment one, including three activities. Activity one is a grade calculator with class grades. Activity two will be a grade calculator for semester averages. And activity three will include the steps to develop a star 360 tracker. So for this activity one, we will return back to so once we've returned back to our classroom assignment, we will click the Create button and go to the Sheets icon. You should see a green Sheets as an option. Once it opens, go ahead and open the tab. All three activities for this first assignment will be created in this worksheet. The first thing I'd like you to do is to change the title of your document. Delete your name from the beginning. And I like to use the cut command. And go to the end of the file name. And press paste. You don't necessarily have to put your first and last name. And go ahead and hit the enter key. The next thing I'd like for you to do at the bottom of the page is to find the worksheet. You'll see the word sheet one. Click the down caret, pop that up, and go to rename and call this class grades activity one. You can abbreviate activity ACT. Class Grades Activity 1. You can also double click the name and that works. The next step is to type in exactly like you see on the screenshot from the instruction page. Focus on getting the text entered exactly as you see. Do not be overly concerned with the formatting of the columns or the rows or how the text wraps or does not wrap. Now I will show you that on the video, but if you'd like to pause the video and simply type into each cell, I will show you in the video, you can either watch it or pause it and enter the text. So you're going to enter. Let's go back ourselves on this video, back to SS1. And in cell A1, we're going to type out grade calculator. And if there is a space, be sure to skip a space. Now in this first activity, I'm going to give you the exact formula to type into the cells. But in the process of learning how to type exactly what a cell formula looks like with the correct references by the time you get to the second and third and on into uh, the, as far as activities go as you get into the second assignment you will need to be able to create your own formulas the scores the grades that are indicated by the 100 or any grades do not enter those grades at this particular time and as far as the boxes, don't worry about those as well. Right now, we're only concentrating on entering in.
Now, when you go back to the instructions, it tells you exactly what cell to put exactly what you see. So for right now, we're entering in minor 40% grades. So we're going to go back and we're going to enter in two cells down, row five. So this is going to go into B5, and I'm going to type in minor 40% grades. And I went ahead and hit the Enter key. And then on column A6, I'm going to type in average. And then I'm going to hit the Enter key and type in assignment. It is best to not take your hand off the keyboard if at all possible. And to do so, use the Enter key, Arrow keys, and the Tab key. So I'm going to Arrow key over, leave two blanks in the middle, and I'm going to type Average again. And then I'm going to put Test or Project 1. And then I'm also going to put Major 60% Grades. All right, so there's some overlapping going on, and that is okay. All right, so now we're going to go back and do just a little bit of formatting. To make a box, highlight the square, and we're going to highlight both of those squares. We're going to click and drag over from A3 to B3, and then I'm going to go up to my menu bar, and where it says Borders, I'm going to click it, and I'm going to go to the first option, which is a grid. Now there is a box, but that would make a box around both of the selected squares or both of the selected cells. We want to choose this option, which is going to put a box around each cell individually. Then I'm going to do the same. I'll go ahead and make class average blue. And then I'm also going to make it bold. That's a control B. And then I'm going to highlight B and C, and I'm going to make those cells blue, also with a grid around them. And I'm going to choose the fill and turn them to blue. And then also I'm going to make them bold. Now how to get the 40% and 60% to go down to the second line. There's actually a couple of different ways you could solve this problem. First, we learned the other day that we can double click the column in between the two columns. When we get the double arrow, we can double click and it will expand the width of the column automatically to fill out for the longest cell within that column. And you'll notice that there's only one cell of text, so this is very easy to see that it goes exactly the width of minor 40% grades. And then we could also do the same thing for column C, double click, and it expands. But we could also learn that we can have two lines of text within a cell by either using the wrapping feature or we can enter and make two lines of text. And I'd like to go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm going to resize column B back to a smaller column. And the benefit for doing that is to can, uh, keep our spreadsheet condensed. So one of my options is to click on both cell B5 and C5. And you'll notice I click off frequently. And the reason why, as I've shown in class, is that if I accidentally start dragging I'll end up dragging a cell over and I'm going to undo so that goes back to what, the way it was so sometimes it's helpful to click off a cell and then get a good click and drag all right so now with both cells selected I'm going to go back up to my menu bar and if you don't see this option you may have to hit the the three little dots that indicate that you've got hidden uh, uh, menu bar or toolbar options and when you click those three dots, you will reveal the rest of your menu bar. So I'm looking for this option that says text wrapping. And we're going to go to the second or the middle option. And you'll notice that it wraps the cell contingent upon how wide that, that whole entire column is. So if my column is wide, it doesn't wrap. 
If my column is narrow, it will wrap even to three lines if necessary. Now there is one other strategy though that is helpful to learn, and that is to force lines of text to go to a second line. And this is fairly advanced, but it's a fun item to learn, so let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to click in front of the 60% or the 6, and I'm going to hold down the control key and hit an enter. And when I do that, it forces the second line of text to go down, or the, the rest of the text to go down to the second line. So both strategies accomplish a similar looking effect. I'm then going to highlight B and C and I'm going to center justify. And you'll notice that minor 40%, the 40 is up on top because I use the wrapping feature, whereas on the major grades, the 60% goes down to the second line. So in this scenario, you can see that it is advantageous to use the wrapping in some scenarios, but in this case, it's better to go ahead and hit control, enter, and now we force the 40% down to the second line. And we can make that a little bit smaller as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make average bold on both sides. Okay, at this point, we are ready to go ahead and enter some formulas. The yellow boxes are indicative of a formula. And what that means is you don't actually enter a grade. You're going to enter a formula. So any boxes... For this assignment and activity as well as the second assignment and additional activities if there's a yellow box it means that we're going to enter a formula now assuming that we've put everything into the correct place we'll make grade calculator larger and bold and just make it a little bit more prominent there so this is step four on your instruction list so as you bounce back and forth from the video tutorial and the handwritten instructions here, the, the text-based instructions, we are now on step four. So we're going to go to B6. In B6, we're going to enter the formula exactly as it appears on the instructions. Now you can actually just copy and paste from this activity on assignment one I am telling you exactly what the formula needs to be. So you'll highlight E or the equal sign average parentheses B7 colon B31 close parentheses. And I'm going to copy that. Use the keyboard command. I'm just showing you the, there it is, keyboard command, control C. And then I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and I'm going to go to B6. And I'm going to go into the cell, double click to enter into the cell. And I'm going to hit Control V to paste and hit the Enter key to accept. Now, do not worry as the sheet gives you uh, an error right off the bat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go get some other formulas. We're going to go back to the instructions and we're going to get on step five the cell for C6. So we're going to copy the equal sign C7 through C31. Control C to copy. Move back. Double click. Paste. Enter. Now I'm going to go back and get my other formula for B3. This is step 6. Again, don't be concerned about trying to learn this formula, but do note the structure of the formula. The formula has an operation or an expression. In this case, it's sum or average. And then we have our references, the cells, which are going to be calculated. So I'm going to highlight the equal sign to the end of the parentheses, copy, go back to my uh, spreadsheet, and go to B3 and paste. And I'm ready to go ahead and hit the Enter key. At this point, I am now ready to go ahead and name my assignments. So in this case, I could say focus 2-1 and go ahead and put in my grade of 100. And you'll notice that as I start to calculate my different cells, let's say we do the greeting card and we put our grade of 100 in. 
we now have our average calculating across the top.